it. But I'm going to give you a tip on how to get around that, and it leads up to my main advice on picking a body shop. Welcome to the channel, Scott Scott HTX. Don't forget the HTX. So you've been in an accident, or you just want to get your hot rod worked on at a body shop. What's the big scare about body shops? First is quality and then safety. Quality has to do with they've done subpar work of subpar materials, and that comes back to haunt you to show through the potty work later on. Safety has to do with structural items in the car. Say there's some structural damage inside the car beyond the body panels that you can't see and they, to save money, did not repair that. Then you get into another accident and you're injured because the safety structure inside the car was compromised. In this video, I'm gonna give you one solid piece of advice that has come true for me over and over again when picking a body shop. People come into the shop all the time asking me, can I recommend them a body shop? And I usually give them this piece of advice. Here's a hierarchy of things I trust the least. Politicians, insurance companies, body shops. Yes, I have friends that are in the industry and have body shops. And for the most part, I trust them. But I'm gonna give you a real time, recent example of how that really didn't play out well for me lately. Well, here it is. A while back, I got in an accident with this truck. Hood, grill, condenser because the grill was pushed into the condenser. It wasn't leaking, but it was dented, so it's a good idea to replace it, and bumper. Now, I picked the truck up, and to my fault, basically, I walked by the truck, said, looks good, got in it, and went home. Three days later, I have no refrigerant in my AC. And I think to myself, now I know that wasn't a problem from the accident because I drove the truck three months after the accident with no problems with, before I took it to the body shop, with no problems with the AC. I thought, I better take a better look at this and see what's going on. So, and this is what I found. There was a leak in this line between the dryer and the compressor and it was leaking around this port right here. I looked at that and I thought I'd better look at this stuff a little bit closer and then I discovered that this part in the front of the car that is more of a air dam between the grill and the radiator was destroyed. To get to the fittings, to get to the condenser, you have to go through this part and instead of taking the little tabs off one by one and taking the part off, they just ripped it up, got to the part, changed the fittings, and slammed it back down. I'm gonna disappear for a second, but I got this camera. Down here, there's this airfoil right here, and it's connected to the bumper, and it's connected to the frame up there. This was destroyed and flapping in the wind because when they took the bumper down, instead of taking the connections off, they just ripped it off. So I took it back to them, just trying to get some explanation to what's going on. This is the two answers I got. Somewhere between the management and the front desk and the people that are working on the car itself, the people that are working on the car itself were told by the management and the front desk to get this job done as fast as possible, save as much money and cut as many corners as you can because that's what the customer wants, which wasn't true. I told my friend and the front desk that I wanted to take your time, I don't care how long it takes, and he had the job done right. So there was some kind of miscommunication between the two. Now when it comes to this part right here, I know the accident didn't cause this thing to leak, but more than likely, it was because of poor service and the process was done improperly that caused this part to leak. We had some disagreement upon that. I think maybe he went to the high side to do the charging, which is in my book, a big no-no and caused this leak. You have a lot of high pressures when you do that. Check out one of my videos, especially the one I did when I fixed the leaks on the Mazda RX-7. That's really informative on AC units. So back to picking a body shop and avoiding that particular situation. And I am leading up to my main advice, but there's a couple other things that we need to consider. Are you working on your hot rod or are you working on your daily driver? If you're working on your hot rod, pick a body shop that works on those type of hot rods. Exotics, hot rods, muscle cars, whatever it is. My point being is if you walk into a body shop and there's 50 insurance jobs laying around and three hot rods ran around, turn around 
and walk away. And that's my advice because more than likely, you're going to, they're going to use those insurance jobs as mainstream income and those hot rods as the gap. Now you've become the gap and you're also fourth in line. Hot rod shops also know that you want it well documented. You want to show it got from this point to this point and everything in between. And they already know that. And this helps you pass all along once you decide to pass it along because it's well documented. Now I understand I live in a city of four million people and I have a better selection of body shops than somebody who lives in a rural area. But most rural areas have a small body shop that most people trust, Billy's Body Shop. And every Sunday you have lunch or coffee at the Dairy Cream with Billy. He's never let anybody down, he's always done quality work. Well, use Billy. If you don't have something like that, consider going into a more urban area and have a better selection of body shops. Now, pucker up, because these body shops are not cheap and they're also full at the moment. Don't be surprised if your 48 Ford truck paint and body cost you 40 grand. Just be warned. I moved around to get in some better lighting. If you're working on your daily driver, there's a couple other things to consider as well. Are you paying out of pocket or are you paying through insurance? If you're paying out of pocket, make sure the body shop knows the quality workmanship and the quality materials you want used on your vehicle. If you only want manufacturer parts used were applicable, make sure they know that. Make sure they document the process of the repair. If you've got structural work to be done beyond the body panels of your vehicle, make sure that they document that those repairs were done. And the best way to do that is through pictures. If you're going through your insurance carrier, make sure you know your contract. I can almost guarantee you that your insurance carrier, aside from the insurance carriers like Hot Rod Insurance, Haggerty's and Grundy and so forth um, like that, has a clause in your um, contract that lets them use whatever part they deem necessary. That means they can use a used part, they can use a part from China, something like that. But I'm going to give you a tip on how to get around that and it leads up to my main advice on picking a body shop. And that is use the dealership as your resource. Remember, you can pick whatever body shop you want. It's your car. And a lot of dealerships have their own body shop. And when they have their own body shop, they want to use their own manufacturer parts. So then they get in this still tit for tat thing between the insurance company wants to use cheap parts, but the body shop wants to use manufacturer parts. Basically, the insurance company have always seen back down. The body shop that says, I cannot do a quality repair on this vehicle unless I use my quality parts. And I've always seen the insurance company back down. What if the dealership doesn't have a body shop? Still use the dealership. If you're paying out of pocket, call up the dealership, ask them what body shop they use. Take your car to that body shop, explain the situation and why you're using them. If you're going through insurance, take your car to the dealership, drop off your keys and your insurance and let the dealership work between you and the body shop and let them be responsible for the body shop's work. That body shop has a connection with that dealership and they want its business. If something goes wrong, you're going to go complain to the dealership and the body shop doesn't want that because they can lose the dealership's business. They're going to do whatever it takes to keep their quality of work and workmanship and materials to the dealership standards. I didn't follow my own advice and look what happens, right? At the end of the day, I end up fixing all this myself. Do you know how much this part right here cost? Over $200. I asked the Ford dealership why and they said Ford's beginning to recognize that people really, really like these 7.3s and all the parts are they're jacking all the parts prices up. Anyway, so I fixed this. I did the labor. I did the charging. I fixed this. I did the labor and I fixed that down there. Now, all is not lost on this because the insurance company made a mistake and they sent me the check instead of the body shop the check. So when I flipped that over to the body shop, I handed them over the money and all the receipts that I had done on, on the bill minus all my receipts. Now it didn't include the labor I had done, but I'm really not too worried about that. And to their credit, they did say that they would give me a free service on the detailing of one of my cars. I, I've chosen never to go back. There you have it. Follow that advice on the dealership. I think that'll really work out for you. 
you know, you guys keep on keeping on and we'll catch you next time.